In this video, we'll go over the Steam Overlay settings and configuring Steam stats and achievements. We'll pick up where we left off in video 2, so if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out first. Okay, let's get started. So first, let's have a look at our settings. Everything you see in the Foundation Manager component is actually stored in the Steam Settings object. This means you can have multiple configurations, say for testing purposes, and you can swap them out with a simple drag and drop. An example of when you might do this would be to swap between your own settings and our example settings for comparison purposes. On the settings object, you can see all of our core Steam settings. We have a reference to our user data, which we'll go into more detail on later, as well as our app ID, last known player count, which is a global stat showing how many players are currently playing this app. Next, we have a list of stats and achievements the setting object is tracking, and finally, our overlay notification settings. Overlay notification is that little pop-up the Steam overlay shows when your friends log in or when you unlock an achievement. If we pop back to our Foundation Manager, we can see the same settings here. It's simply laid out in a slightly more friendly manner, with stats and achievements on their own tabs. You'll also notice that the Foundation Manager gives you access to events for each of the major areas. These events are actually stored on the settings object but exposed to the inspector via the Foundation Manager. This is just to make it easier to drag and drop handlers on them as you would for, say, a buttons on click event. You can, of course, register them in code, and we will demonstrate that in a later video. Moving on to stats. First, let's assume you've already created a stat in your portal on the Steam Partner site. To do so, go to your Steamworks portal and in App Admin, select your game. Under the Technical Tools heading, select Edit Steamworks Settings. Then select Stats and Achievements, Stats. Now you can create a new stat and choose your type. Be sure to give it a name as well, as we'll need this name in our settings. Note, by default a stat is set by the client. However, you can also configure your stat to be set only by a GS or an official GS that is, a Steam game server or an official Steam game server. For our example, we'll stick with client, and we'll simply name it example1 and give it a default value of 0. For our display name, let's just call it example stat 1. So we need to make a stats data object. To do so, we right-click in our project and select Create, Steamworks, Foundation, and then we choose whether we are making an int or float stat. In my case, I made example 1 an int, so I'll choose int. We set our stat name to example 1, which is what we set in the portal, and finally we drag the entry to the Foundation Manager Stats tab. Achievements work very much the same way. In fact, you create them in a similar place in the portal. To do so, go under Stats and Achievements, Achievements. Note that it's the API name in both cases that the data object expects. Achievement Setup in Steam has a few more steps requiring a couple icons, and like stats can be made such that only a game server or official game server can unlock it. You can then create your achievement data object back in Unity and give it the name of your achievement. Then drag it to your Foundation Manager's Achievements tab. You'll note the Achievement tab has its own set of events, and in fact, each stat or achievement data object has its own events. That's it for this video. We'll also include a link to a script file that shows you how to reference stat and achievement data objects in code and how to set or unlock them. In our next video, we'll take a look at leaderboards and the heat and tooling around them.